Hey guys, what's up? This is Nasudu and you're watching Microsoft Flight Simulator and today we want to have a short lesson uh, about how to fly helicopters in Microsoft Flight Simulator. Um, you might have seen the other video that I did on a topic, uh, my hover tutorial. And in this tutorial today we will go a little bit more into the regular flight, um, taxi takeoff, all that stuff. And what we do first is we will get into the weather tab and uh, turn off live weather and eliminate the wind. Um, that's not super realistic, but uh, especially when you're new to helicopters, you want to have some conditions that um, that you can reproduce so that every input that you make has the same effect uh, the next time you try it. When you're confident with everything, you can get back to live weather or selected weather conditions, that's okay. But for the beginning, I would recommend to use no wind. Also, a recommendation from my side is to use the uh, Gimbal Cabri G2 as a training helicopter. Um, there are some issues with the Bell 407 and I think the G2 is just a lot easier to fly and to learn when you begin with flying helicopters. So let me zoom out a little bit and we quickly go over the control surfaces. You should have the uh, anti-torque uh, axis bound to either your pedals or if you don't have pedals uh, to a twist grip or a uh, rocker that some uh, HOTA systems have on the throttle. You should have bound the cyclic, which is uh, used for forward and backward and lateral movement. That's the control surface that we will use to um, control our airspeed. And you should have bound the collective, which is used to control the vertical speed and the altitude of the helicopter. So uh, in terms of axis, um, I personally like to have everything linear, but if you have a, let's say, a joystick that is uh, not super accurate or has not a lot of throw, I'm using a 10 centimeter extension, um, then you might be better with some curves, but I personally think it's better to have no curves because I want the same amount of virtual input no matter how far I push my physical stick. All right, so let's get familiar with everything one more time real quick. When we pull up the collective, we adjust the uh, pitch of the rotor blades and go up in the helicopter. When we push the stick forward, we will gain speed. If we push the stick backwards, we will slow down and also climb a little bit. And uh, as you have seen, when I was uh, adding collective, we started to yaw to the left. We will have to counter that with the anti-torque pedals. That's uh, the controls in a nutshell. Right, so uh, we are here in... Oh, by the way, let me... Get a little bit nicer setting here. Light setting. I like that more. Um, not so dark. So when we are in our helicopter um, and we are here on the concrete, we want to do a hover trick. Every time you step into a helicopter, you should do that to find out how much torque. Uh, you can read this on this gauge here. How much torque is necessary to bring the helicopter to a three to five foot hover? Um, you should find that out. So we apply a little bit of collective and we go slowly up. And slowly is a buzzword here because um, when you come from fixed wing aircraft, it might be a little bit unusual how small the inputs 
R that you actually have to give to uh, control a helicopter, so keep that in mind. <clears throat> so whatever you do, do it slow and controlled. So we see that the helicopter at above 50% torque starts to move. Wants to go to the left, I do some counteraction with the right anti-torque pedal. And at 63 to 64% we have a solid uh, 5 or 6 foot hover. And at this point there is the first trap that you can get into. Um, I'm pretty used to flying helicopters but hovering is not that hard and it's also not a state where you are you know super stable uh, the helicopter will always move a little bit and you will constantly have to make tiny inputs let's zoom out a little bit more um, to keep that hover state a a thing when you when you're new to helicopters is very often that you come into a state that is uh, pilot induced oscillation or simple simply said uh, over oversteering you give too much input so the helicopter goes right you don't want it you give a lot of left input and it goes a lot of left and you give even more right input and then you come into this uh, crazy dance so in this situation here's my tip um, reduce your inputs with every switch of direction and you will catch that a lot easier than with uh, big inputs. So small inputs is the thing here with helicopters. And we've seen another effect of this uh, uncontrolled going around. We'll talk about this a little bit later, but you see that the helicopter, the faster it goes around, it just lifts. And that's due to the fact that we are entering um, ETL, uh, Effective Translational Lift. We will talk about that when we take off. And um, a common mistake here at this point is, let's produce it again, uh, I give a lot of inputs, uh, heavy inputs, it's going up, I don't want this, I put the collective down, I'm falling down and I crash into the ground. So actually when uh, you are in that state, let's go one more time into that state uh, where we are flying around a little bit uncontrolled, so what you want to do to stop the upward movement is to slow down. So when you have your hover torque of 63%, uh, roughly 63-64% in these conditions, um, to prevent the helicopter from going up in this situation, your action that you have to take is slowing down. And that you do with uh, tiny inputs and as I said, each time you change the direction of your input, try to give a little bit less amount than the input you did before. All right, so here we are, we are ready for takeoff. And what we will do now is we will do a running takeoff. We have no wheels, but uh, we do this from the hover state. And I want you to have a look. I don't know if you can see it, if you can read it really good. Here is the airspeed. Um, you will see that above five knots we will start to lift so this is then when we are entering uh, ETL zone which is not really correct in Microsoft Flight Simulator I think because um, for this helicopter I did read the manual and uh, as for most of the helicopters the range where you get into ETL is between 16 and 24 knots um, that just means that while we are here hovering, you know, you have a lot of air um, produced by the uh, main rotor blade and vortices and everything. And once we reach a certain speed, we uh, enter fresh air. And in that fresh air, with the uh, power setting that we have right now, we will gain lift. So Microsoft Flight Simulator has this zone 
already at six knots so let's move a little bit forward here slightly push forward to gain some speed and we see three four and we are already climbing six and we are climbing relatively fast and that's i mean it's a super light helicopter but it's the same with the Bell 407, so if we want to get down again, we have to lift the nose a little bit, reduce the airspeed, get below 6 knots, 5-4, and you see with this power setting, we come slowly back into our hover state. So, but that also means that if we accelerate, with this power setting uh, all we have to do is to move forward to take off and lift off the ground so let's do that I push a little bit forward a little bit more zoom and you can see that we are gaining speed 20 knots and we are climbing and climbing and climbing and climbing so what that means is that uh, in these conditions with let's settle down at like 50, if we go 50 knots with our uh, hover power setting we will climb so of course we have to reduce collective if we want to stay at a given speed 50 knots in that case at a certain altitude so you can see on the uh, left gauge here um, that we are climbing and climbing and climbing so I'm reducing my collective and I try to maintain the speed of 50 knots by pushing the nose a little bit down and in a real helicopter you would probably feel the uh, vertical speed here I have to look at the gauges to get it exactly right in a regular flight I wouldn't care too much about being exactly on zero vertical speed and what you probably can't see is that I'm slowly uh, letting the stick going backwards so here we are 50 knots almost no vertical speed and we keep that speed by holding the cyclic in a certain forward position if we want to go faster from here we have to push even more forward but now we are trading altitude for speed that means that if we want to keep that we will have to give it a little bit more collective it's not a lot just a little bit so we have a new power setting now going like 64 knots and keeping the altitude if we want to go even faster let's say 80 knots we push the nose down we raise the collective to prevent the helicopter from, uh, from getting lower and I'm now almost full forward with the uh, cyclic and we have 74 percent can lower this a little bit because we're climbing and here we are so if we want to get slower we just lift the nose and as we lift the nose you see that we are climbing so what we also have to do is we have to reduce the collective i'm going down with the collective on that i want to have 60 knots so time to push the nose down a little bit and to find now the power setting again for no climb at 60 knots which is around 52 to 50 percent and there we are all right so getting into a turn is uh, also super easy we just bank the helicopter a little bit to the left and it will go to the left. Notice that as long as you have your nose below the horizon you will keep your speed or even accelerate 
but we do also see that we descend. So if we want to hold the uh, altitude in that turn, we have to give a little bit of collect. And as we are exiting the turn, we are again on 60 knots. All right, so let's see where is the, there's the airport. I want to go a little bit more left to get to an interception course for the runway. And we will do the landing. So by the way, um, if you, if you come to like 70, 60, 70 knots, um, the amount of uh, anti-talk pedal that you have to give to keep the helicopter straight and stable um, gets lower and lower and lower. So keep that in mind. Uh, there is the runway. And uh, I think to, to explain the landing, I will go into active pause for a moment and give us... Oh, I will not find the position of the joystick. Okay. And give us this little thingy here. So what I want is to explain the landing before we do it. And then we will do the landing. Okay. So this is our... Uh, super cool helicopter and here is the spot where we want to land either do a vertical landing on a spot somewhere outside a helipad or something or the runway and what we want to achieve is to go down in kind of uh, a nice little glide slope angle and in this process we will also want to get rid of our airspeed so let's say that we start here with um, 90 knots airspeed. Um, we want to sink and we want to also uh, slow down in one process. So we want to have like 60 knots here, then 40 knots here, 20 knots right before we uh, touch down and we can either try to do it simultaneously or you can also try to you know use a section to slow down and then a section to descend a section to slow down a section to descend um, and then later on with practice you will get a solid fluent uh, landing procedure and what we also also should talk about is this uh, area here below 20 knots and right before landing because when we uh, when we reduce our altitude we know that we have to take away collective and that will bring us to a uh, torque number of like 30 or something um, our aim is to be in the area of uh, 500 feet per minute uh, while we are descending and then slow that down to like uh, 300 feet per minute uh, in this section here. Um, usually in other simulators we would have to talk about this area in special um, because at this point uh, 20 knots you are entering the, uh, um, the range where you start to lose uh, effective translational lift and in that area if you are too uh, high on your velocity um, and you're sinking too fast you risk VRS this is right now not in the sim but it's a good habit to uh, develop to um, try to not exceed 300 feet per minute in this area and the uh, second thing is uh, we said that we will have like 34% of torque in this area. Uh, this is where we have to raise the collective again 
because we uh, remember that our hover torque um, power setting was 63-64%. So if we don't want to crash into the ground here, we need to be very close to that number when we are slowing down and reaching zero speed. So let's put that in practice. Just minimize. Here we go. Of course, I have my joystick centered, so we need to catch that again. So, and there is the runway. All right, so let's say we are Accelerating to like 90 knots. So I'm heading collective because I don't want to sink right now. Or 70 knots. 70 knots is enough to to get this thing done. So our aim is that area right where the runway starts, where those uh, bars are on the runway and the uh, runway heading. So what we do is first we slow down. So we do nose up. Of course when we do nose up we are climbing so we are reducing collective. And we try to find the position for the nose where we have like 60 knots. And this marking here in front of us also helps us to kind of separate the final approach into sectors so at half of it I want to be at 40 knots so we have to put the nose up we are descending with yeah in between 500 600 feet per minute And we are at 40 knots, we don't need to decelerate even more, so nose down. Nose down means we have to give a little bit of collective to not exceed our vertical speed. So now we have to slow down. 20 knots, that's where we bring in some collective again. 500 feet, that's a little bit fast. Okay, and now is the area below 20 knots where we have to bring in like 60% to get into hover torque. And we are hovering right at the spot where we want it to be. Just a tick down and we sit down back on the ground. All right. Um, I hope that gives you some basic information about how to uh, take off, fly and land a helicopter. If, we ha if you have questions, let me know in the comments down below. If you think I'm talking bullshit here and there, also let me know. And uh, let's recap just briefly what we've learned. We've learned that uh, <clears throat> ETL, the uh, speed where you have additional lift on the helicopter, is very low in Microsoft Flight Simulator at about 5 knots. We start to lift pretty fast. We control our airspeed by bringing nose down or nose up. And we have to adjust the uh, collective to control our vertical speed and the anti-torque pedals to remove some yawing from the helicopter, which reduces with greater speed. So I hope this was kind of helpful. Um, let me know in the comments down below consider to subscribe to the channel because I will be doing more helicopter flying in Microsoft Flight Simulator and maybe you can take something out of this and as always I say thank you for watching take care bye bye